Hello everybody um, and welcome to the review of the unit circle. Um, before we get started I would like for you to go into Schoology um, and grab a filled in unit circle. So if you guys go to the Schoology course um, you will see that right below the calculus textbook link is a unit circle. So if you click on that and open it you will be able to pull up a filled in unit circle. Um, this is something I allow students to use on all tests and quizzes in this class. Um, so I will hand you a paper copy, um, but if you're working from home and you need one, there it is located. So I would pull that up today and have it handy. It's also on the notes, um, but it's kind of nice if you just have this paper in front of you. So let's go ahead and get started. The trig functions, you should know all of the trig functions. Um, we have sine, cosine, and tangent. I feel like most of you are comfortable with sine, cosine, and tangent. Um, if you um, remember from trig, good old, or even geometry, toa. A few other ways you can find sine is it's your opposite over your hypotenuse. Cosine is your adjacent over your hypotenuse, and tangent is your opposite over adjacent. Um, and then these are all of our reciprocal functions. So the reciprocal of sine is cosecant. Okay, so if you want to find cosecant, it's 1 over sine. Um, the reciprocal of cosine is secant, so it's 1 over cosine. Um, people tend to try and think sine and secant are reciprocal functions. However, you have to remember you flip um, your solution um, with reciprocal, so you have to flip the front letter. Okay, so sine goes with cosecant, cosecant goes with secant. And then tangent and cotangent, I think, are pretty easy to remember that they go together. Um, so these are some functions that you should make sure you have down. Some other trig functions, um, tangent, it's important to remember that tangent is sine over cosine. Um, and then cos cotangent, since it's a reciprocal of tangent, is cosine over sine. So that's important to know. Um, here's a little joke. We got sine gerine over cosine gerine, which gives us a tangerine. So we got sine over cosine. Um, here is our unit circle. Very basic, not filled in, but unit circle. And the way the reason it's called a unit circle is because the radius of this circle is equal to one. It's one unit. Okay. Um, and there are some important ordered pairs that you can find all the way around on a unit circle. Um, and they are your sine and cosine values using those special right triangles, your 30, 60, 90. Um, so just one thing to remember is that your x on your unit circle is your cosine value, cosine of theta, and then your y is your sine of theta. Okay, so those are some things to remember. Um, another thing to remember is within this unit circle, we have the Pythagorean identity. Um, so do you guys see a right triangle here? We can do the Pythagorean theorem with it. We would have x squared plus y squared equals 1 squared. So if I were to simplify, we got x squared plus y squared equals 1. Um, and then using our trig functions, if I were to plug it in, we get a very important identity. It's called the Pythagorean identity. What is the same as x? Cosine. So cosine squared of theta or x plus our y value, so sine, sine squared equals 1. There's our Pythagorean identity. Cosine squared plus sine squared equals 1, or sine squared plus cosine squared equals 1. Um, that's an important identity to make sure that you have down. All right, so we are going to be using our unit circle to help us out. You guys can use it on your test. I'm also going to show you how to do this on your calculator, which just reminds me I'm going to grab that really quick. So if you want to maybe take a second and grab your calculator while I am loading mine, Okay, so it says find the exact value. I'm going to show you how to do it off your unit circle, and then I'll show you on the calculator. So cosine of pi over 4. Um, so I go and find the angle measure, which is in radians, pi over 4. And then cosine is your x or your y. It is an x value. So what is the x value at that ordered pair? It is square root of 2 over 2. Okay. Now, when we do this, you need to have exact answers. Okay, so when you do it on your calculator, you won't always get an exact answer. But if you look at all of these ordered pairs, there's only three numbers that are being used. It's one half, 
well, sorry, there's really six. We have one half, negative one half. Then we have square root of two over two and negative square root of two over two. And then lastly, we have square root of three over two. So you can use your calculator to kind of keep that in mind and help find answers. So if you didn't have your unit circle handy, what you would do is we're plugging in radians. So first things first, we gotta change our mode to be radians. So we go mode, change it to radians, hit enter. And then I would go ahead and type cosine of pi divided by four. And I get this answer and I'm like, I don't remember what it is, but I know my three options. My options are one half. I know it's not one half. Um, my other option is square root of two divided by two. So if you forget, you could always type it in and see how they match. So I know that's my exact answer. Our other answer option is square root of three divided by two. So you could always type that in. And if you get that answer, you know it's square root of three over two. Okay, so that's the other reason I know my answer is square root of two over two. Example B, negative seven pi over four. So remember with our unit circle, we start here at zero and go this direction. That's the positive direction. Okay, so if this just said sine of seven pi over four, I would go ahead and find seven pi over four, and then you tell me sine is the y value, so it'd be negative square root of two over two. Now the difference is I am not going that direction. I'm going the negative direction for a distance of seven pi over four. So you have to think I'm going through three quadrants plus half of another one. So now I have to go the negative direction, going this way. Go through three quadrants plus another one. So really, negative seven pi over four is equivalent to sine of pi over four. The other thing that you could do is you could say, well, I could do the whole rotation, which is sine of two pi minus seven pi over four. And if we do this, um, I would get a common denominator, so times by four, so we'd have eight pi over four minus seven pi over four. Common denominator, so I put my numerators together. Eight pi minus seven pi gives me pi, so I'd have sine of pi over four. So you can either look at it visually and calculate the distance, or you can do the math to figure out the positive. So this one's asking us to find sine at pi over four. So when I get there, I'm going to my y value, so my answer is square root of two over two. Other option would be to type it in on your calculator. Sine of seven, nope, sorry, negative, negative seven pi divided by four. And you would see that it's this answer, which is square root of two over two. So there you get the answer as well. So you can use your calculator or you can go ahead and use the unit circle. You have both options available to you. Um, cosine of three pi over two. I'm not gonna type this one in. I'm just gonna find it off my unit circle. So three pi over two straight down. Um, and then cosine is your x, so my answer is zero. If you were to type it in, as long as you're in radian mode, you would get that answer as well. Now this one's a little different. It is cosecant of pi over four, okay? Um, so we could simplify this um, to the reciprocal of cosecant is one over sine of pi over four, okay? So what I would do is we gotta find sine of pi over four. You can type it in on your calculator um, if you want, or you can find it on the unit circle. Um, if you wanna type it, I'll let you do it um, on your own, but we'd have one over, and then sine of pi over four, here's pi over four, and so sine is your y, so it's square root of two over two. Now we have a fraction within a fraction, so I need to multiply by the reciprocal. So it's really one and then flip this guy, times two over root two. So we have two root two, which you can't leave. Um, you need to rationalize, can't leave that square in the bottom. So you times both sides, top, not both sides, numerator and denominator by square root of two. So I have two root two all over two. And then lastly, those would cancel and you are left with square root of two. Okay. And there is your answer for two A secant of three pi over two. So who is my reciprocal of secant? It is cosine, so it'd be one over cosine of that value, three pi over two. Once again, you could type this part into your calculator. Remember just to keep it over one. I'm gonna go ahead and find it on my unit circle. Here's three pi over two, cosine is x. So I have one over zero. Hmm. If I type that in my calculator, I will get domain error. 
So in this case, that is not possible. It is what we say, it is undefined. We cannot divide by zero. So our answer for this one is undefined. Um, find the exact value of tangent. Okay, so tangent is not directly on here, but we know that tangent is sine over cosine. So what we have to do is we have to find sine of five pi over six divided by cosine of five pi over six. So what I would do is you could type this in your calculator, write that answer down, and you can do the same thing with cosine, or if you have your unit circle handy, which we do, and you will be able to on your test, um, I would go to five pi over six, and my sine value is your y, so one half, over my cosine value, which is negative square root of three over two. And now from here, I just need to simplify. When I have a fraction within a fraction, the top one stays the same. We flip and multiply by that bottom one. Um, if I look here, my twos would cancel. So I have negative one over root three. And once again, we need to rationalize times by square root of three, top and bottom. So I got negative square root of three all over three. And that's my solution for 2c. Last type of examples. It says use the equation x squared plus y squared equals 1 and the quadrant to find the value of y. So we are talking about x is here and we're in quadrant 3. So here's quadrant 1, quadrant 2, quadrant 3, and lastly, quadrant 4 is over here. Um, if I'm in quadrant 3, my ordered pairs are negative, negative. So we'll have to keep that in mind. So my x is negative, um, my y will also need to be negative. So we're going to solve this using the Pythagorean theorem. We take our x and we plug it in here. So I got negative square root of 3, sorry, negative square root of 13 over 7 squared plus y squared equals 1. Now, if you take a negative and square it, you get a positive. Then you have to take your 13, the square root of 13 and square it, and then you square 7. The square root and the square will cancel, so you're left with 13 over 49 plus y squared equals 1. Then to get y by itself, I would subtract to the other side, so I have 1 minus 13 over 49. So you can do that on your calculator and do math frac, or you're like, this is 49 over 49 minus 13 over 49, so y squared equals... Um, I'll write it out. So you got 49 over 49 if you want to do it without your calculator. Since we have a common denominator, we can just take 49 minus 13, which is 36. So y squared equals 36 over 49. And in order to get y by itself, we take the square root. Biggest thing, you guys, when you take the square root, two answers always, always, plus or minus, positive and negative. So y is equal to plus or minus, and then you would say, the square root of 36 is 6, and the square root of 49 is 7. Now, it told me quadrant 3, so that tells me my y value is negative, so I select that answer. So my answer is negative 6 sevenths. And that is, for example, 3a. And lastly, 3b. Why don't you pause this one and give this one a try on your own? All right, now that you've paused it, we are in quadrant one, and quadrant one is positive, positive. So we're going to want both positive answers. And then if I plug it in, we got four-fifths squared plus y squared equals one. So you square both parts. We got 16 25ths plus y squared equals one. Subtract 16 25ths, so I have one minus 16 25ths. That gives us nine 25ths. We take our square root. Y is equal to plus or minus. The square root of 9 is 3. The square root of 25 is 5. So Y equals, which one do I want? I am in quadrant 1. My Y is positive. So 3, this. So that is example 3. Um, your homework is to complete the unit circle worksheet. And if you have any questions, just let me know. Otherwise, have a great day.